home day, and a Canadian crooner is giving us an exclusive tour. Hey, City Line, Matt Dusk here. Come on in, you're my invited guest. We go inside his hotel-inspired home. At our house, we always have tons of guests. You're invited anytime you want to stay over. That's the way, open door policy. Then Colin and Justin want to spoil me. So yeah. we've given you double vanities, heavily hedonistic, indulgent, spa at home glamour for you. Make your bathroom a rustic spa. There's passion there mm -hmm. and there's escapism there and that is what a spa bathroom should deliver. And later, Chef Dennis Prescott is cooking with confidence. All East Coasters have mm. their own version of a chowder. This is mine. I would argue it's the best chowder you've ever had in your life. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. Good. Welcome to City Line, everyone. It's home day, and today we are diving into the world of luxury living with a twist of musical elegance. With 16 critically acclaimed albums and over 1 million sold worldwide, this Canadian crooner is gearing up for a spring tour honoring the late Tony Bennett. But before he hits the road, he's here with us. So please welcome the one and only Matt Dust. <laughs> Hi. See, I changed. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we see? Oh, wow. Yeah, have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you. Okay. So they're losing it, which is amazing. I love that. Matt came in and we were doing rehearsals and I was in a track suit. He's like, nice look. I'm like, thank you. It's called Hockey Mom. There you go. But I changed for you. Um, okay. So, so excited to get into your world. And you were really nice about letting us in. I want to talk about inspiration. Yeah. You spent a ton of time in hotels. You're on the road quite frequently. Did this sort of inspire your design yeah, of your I, home? I mean, like, when people think about going away, you're always thinking, like, okay, where are we going to go? And sometimes you can get a really nice hotel. Sometimes, if you can't, you're going to go even walk around and, you know, walk into the Four Seasons, right? And you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Beautiful. So I was like, hey... Why not bring that to my house? Because at our house, we always have tons of guests. We have a multi-generation -gener uh, living, yeah. and you're invited anytime you want to stay over. That's the way. Open door policy. Well, I actually <laughs> saw a little bit of the tape of your home, yeah. and I do, in fact, want to move in. Come on. Come on like, in. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Do you want to see what it looks like? Okay. Let's take a look at Matt's home. It's good. Hey, City Line, Matt Dusk here. Come on in, you're my invited guest. I'm gonna check you into my hotel. Come right on in. So to begin, we have this lovely fountain here. It's blessed, you can bless your, I'm just kidding, no. Actually, it's an homage to my father. When my father was alive, he used to have this beautiful, beautiful fountain by the front door. So once we built our house, this is an homage to him. Now, we're gonna take you to where my family and I love to hang out. It's right here in the kitchen. One thing you have to know about this house, it's not just for me. There are many, many people that live here at any one time, anywhere from eight to 10 people. We're a multi-generational family, basically can seat up to 17 people at any one time. Which brings me to my next part, is this lovely thing called a coffee maker. <laughs> it's probably the most used thing. We actually did a count on this coffee maker. I think it's only been here for three years and we have 25,000 coffees. This is an art piece which is based on an old game. It's called Game of Goose, and it was one of the oldest gambling games. Since I lived in Las Vegas, I thought it would be very appropriate to put it in my house. So, this is where all the music magic happens. A good friend of mine, he's a very successful songwriter, has millions of these plaques, and he put them on his wall and he said, hey man, look at all my, my awards. And so I put these up for his honor. <laughs> Come with me, we're gonna go upstairs. Now, a lot of people ask why this whole area is open. First and foremost, because we have a lot of people living here, we wanted to make sure all the living areas open into one another. Plus, when we're having parties, we have concerts down there, we have lots of people up here hanging out watching the show. 
The one thing that we wanted with our bedroom was, again, to keep that dark kind of theme with the dark wallpaper and the blue. Here's a lesson. Measure first. <laughs> Sofa comes in. We can't get it in anywhere. We had to go off through the porch, up through the sunroof, across the roof, pop out the window, and it's here. So, if you ever buy this house, it's coming with. So you've seen the bedroom, but when I designed this house, I needed an escape plan to my favorite place in the whole house, the bar. Let's take the elevator. Come along. I'll see you there. Bye. All right, we're here. Best place of the house. This is where all my friends and family love to hang out. We got wine, we got beer, we got anything you want to make you, as my guest, feel comfortable. Want me to make you a drink? Okay. All right, so after I make my guests, like yourself, some lovely drinks, I like to come to my couch, relax, and catch up on some City Line. My two pals, Colin and Justin. Ow, oh, they've really gotten better. All right, well, let's go to my second favorite place called the Wine Cellar. Now this place was actually full in March of 2020, but unfortunately, we don't have a lot left for obvious reasons, but who doesn't like a nice Cabernet or a Merlot or a Champagne? So I got a few things around the house that have some you know, kind of sentimental value to me. This is obviously some of the greatest musicians of all time, the Beatles, and it's signed by Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney. All right, City Line, thank you so much for coming to my place. You're welcome anytime. You'll always be a guest of mine. Bye guys, adios. Oh Whee! yes, there's room for me. Did you like that? That was so cool. That was, that was so cool. And it's so weird to have us come into oh, your home. Oh my gosh, it is so weird because like a house is meant to be lived in, right? right. So you gotta clean up, you're like, oh crap, gotta put this there, but at yeah. the same time, you're always welcome to come over anytime you'd like. Thank you so much. I've already sort of earmarked my yeah. bedroom in the West Wing. <laughs> uh, okay, so we saw them in the house tour. Let's welcome them now. Colin and Justin, come yeah. on in here. Good <laughs> you know what? You really have gotten better. <laughs> it's been so long since we saw you. First of all, I how know. do you even know each other? We like, how does this work? We actually spent time in prison together. Oh, okay. okay. And then we shared a cell, and Matt had this cutting plan to break free, and he, yeah. he found and made a path for us to Canada. Oh my God, that's exactly. It's all thanks to this one. Yeah, yeah. we've known each other for a long, long time. Yeah. Just yeah. like, what is it? Is it uh, like years. worlds crossing? Yeah. Is it events? events? Parties, is it mutual yeah. friends? We don't have any friends. Really. We it's don't. Just we just work yeah. yeah. on. But you know what? What is particularly insulting? So we made him a lovely dinner, and he forgot all about it. He forgot he'd even been for dinner. Hold on a second. What a hot shot! First, first, first yeah. and foremost, I, I think it was you that was making the cocktails, so I blame my memory lapse okay. on you. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, well, there's a heavy <laughs> portrait. Hands down. You know, yeah. what? If, if there's a zombie apocalypse, I'm going to come to your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> you I know what? Who doesn't want a bar, complete bar, just like the Four Seasons? Totally. In their That's house. A really it was lovely like a place. speakeasy too, like secret door. Yes. Go, it's it's dark in here. We don't here. charge people for booze either. Oh my God. Oh. Love this it. is good. It's free drink. Super lovely. Really dramatic. <laughs> Almost like a bond layer. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Really, and you can imagine it'd be a great place for you to retreat because you lead a really busy life and traveling all the time. So well done. Yeah, well, what house. I really liked about the tape was just the fact that so many people live there. Yeah. You know, what was it? Seating for 17 around that yeah, table? Yeah, so, so the main table has, I think, 12 and the island has five. But the thing is, as a kid, I grew up in a, like a triplex. So I was yeah. always being taken care of by other, you know, other groups of people. Yeah. So uh, when we had the decision to, to move it all in together, a lot of our family is, you know, they're transient. They go on vacations. They got to go away for work. So what a great way to have a home. Just be more than that. Be almost like a place that you can call your own. It's not just a house. Yeah. It's multi generational, though, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's a so commune. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's a commune. We call it the village. And I love we call that. it the village. It, it takes a village, doesn't it? Yeah. I think the great thing about your house, and I think the takeaway for everyone watching, mm -hmm. is the fact that if we didn't know it was your house, we would guess. And it's because we could see your DNA, your personality, your yeah. hobbies, your interests, your achievements on the walls. Mm -hmm. And all of our this houses... Is a great publicist. Yeah, all all of our houses should do that. You know, yeah. we should all have that. I'll take a little bit of Matt Dusk home with you. Yeah. We should all have that so we're in our spaces where we feel totally us. 
it should it should yes. reflect your personality yes. rather than just making it you know I saw it at the store I brought it home exactly. it should look like you yeah uh, back to the multi-generational thing I just think it's really lovely and admirable actually because I think a lot of us have become very individualistic in our you know our suburban homes with our nuclear families or our partners yeah. and that's it and it's not really the way life was meant to be lived so why was that important for you? Well, I mean, my, my wife is, she's from Eastern Europe, and that was always, like, a, a big thing. And second of all, like, when you think about, you know, as our, our parents or our elders get older, they need help, just as, you know, people like to have kids or like to have dogs or cats, and they, sometimes they just want to go away and spend time alone. So now uh -huh. you have everybody sharing in the responsibility. Uh -huh. And what's so cool about it is that we actually don't, want to kill each other right like we we, we, <laughs> yeah. we, we we like each other so you know if if, if that happens then you yeah. just gotta take a little bit of a vacation you know I love it a lot of people uh, for the older generations they will you know they go to a home there's nothing yeah. wrong with that if you find lodgings that work for them um, but I think that there's something really special about having everyone live together yeah, we, mm. we um, built it like that so yeah, that you built it like that. Works clearly not. E even yeah. even after you know we hope that the home is there for a long time but mm -hmm. eventually if it, we decide to move Someone can move in with the exact same situation, like you guys with yeah. your cats, so you Very guys nice. move in with Tracy. Is there yeah, room yeah, yeah. for us to move in permanently? Yes, absolutely. Can you find us a wing? We'll take yeah. the wing that Tracy's not in. We'll yes. be on the other side. You go to the east We're just going to make the whole yeah. set there. We'll just meet you at the pool. Yeah. 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 For a cocktail, yeah. Tracy. Were you watching some of the design details? You talked about personality, but was there anything else that jumped out at you, Colin and Justin, just about how uh, Matt's home was designed? Color as well. Do you know, we Color. live in a world that has become, to a degree, homogenous in terms of the green grayscale and beige mm -hmm. and I really like that but you do what we do Matt you added flashes of color in the middle of that and that engages the rest of your scheme it felt really exciting mm. I yeah. remember a very funny story when we first moved in uh, we would we would play uh, I spy with my my daughter yeah. and she would be like I spy with my little eye something that is black <laughs> I was like, what the Could be anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Can you so be right, more specific? We have to, uh -huh. to add color. We got to put the throw pillows in. We got to yeah. put, you know, all uh -huh. that stuff. So you guys got it right. But that's it's exciting. You know, your daughter was excited. Your whole family are excited by that. And I think just having little moments in your home really works as well. I love your staircase. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, the thing is, you're on stage. You're used to a great entrance. You know, you want to arrive. You know, here he is. Uh, you know, so have that at home that's as well. I there, I can see you descending like down yes. there. I thought it was a bit funny in your dressing room. There was a lot of high-heeled shoes. Yeah. Was that yours? Well, you know, I didn't want to say anything. Boys has got to do yeah. what a boy's got to do. It's private. It's private. Yeah. Thank you, you for legs. letting us into no. your space. You there coming. is something very personal about doing that, so it we is. appreciate you. And you had to have all your dishes washed. Like, it's annoying. So looks good on film. You. Looks yeah, good. it looks very good. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, but stick around because Matt will join us yeah. later in the show. More City Line ahead. Coming up, Colin and Justin get frugal. Can actually save money by having one of these? Uh huh. Because you can actually save your hot water bill. Because you and your partner can get in at the same time. You can. <laughs> And they're showing us how to escape in this rustic spa bathroom. I love it here. I want to stay here. I might hang out in the tub a little bit Do later. <laughs> are we moving away from the whole spa aesthetic? Because we are used to seeing very white bathrooms, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for the longest time, it was all about shine and gloss and glitz. Yeah. But there's been a real turn away from that, Tracy. And I think it's because it's kind of responding to everything that we've gone through over the last few years. People want something that's much, much more indulgent, and the word rustic fits so well in that space. Mm -hmm. When you look at our rustic scheme like we've done today, it makes you think of being indulged. Um, you'll notice it's a large space, so I will say yes. on this occasion we've actually borrowed into the sides of the studio that we wouldn't normally have as our feature. Mm -hmm. But that kind of references the fact that in this day and age, many people are borrowing space from around their home to enlarge the bathroom. Yeah. So we've given you double vanities, heavily hedonistic, indulgent, spa at home glamour for you. Uh, thank I'm you. you I will on. accept. You're on. <laughs> it is beautiful here, and it's to me, it's the warmth. That's what I like. So let's start with this gorgeous wall. 
you know, it's a so focal point. Feature wall is gorgeous, mm -hmm. you know, and this is actually a mural by About Murals, great nice. Canadian company, and it is a photograph of a cabin wall. So you could have this anywhere, and I think when you're going to have something strong like that, it's good to use it in one space rather than all around. Yeah. So you just get that focal point. But for me, I look at that and I'm thinking about the quintessential North American escape. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about log cabins, cottages by the woods. So suddenly, you know, there's passion there mm -hmm. and there's escapism there. And that is what a spa bathroom should deliver. So yes. when was the last time you got that excited about a piece of tile? <laughs> yeah, you know? So get the timber in there and, you know, yeah. fake it till you make it with a great mural. It's, be it's well faked. It is. Right? I love it so much. So while we're talking about tiles, let's get down to the ground now because this flooring as well, it looks very luxe. Isn't it? Uh, is it luxe? Well, it What's is, Tracy. it made of? Well, Colin talked about fake it till you make it. We're yeah. doing fake it till you make it down in the floor as well. Now, this product is by a company called Carndine. Uh -huh. The product itself is called Capri Loosely. Now, I'm going to tell you why it's called Loosely. I'll just get my cards over there. This is such a malleable and movable product. It's a tile that's Ooh. built to look like stone or wood. It's got flexibility. Yeah. And that flexibility, Trace, is your friend because it will absorb any surface irregularities on the floor. Nice. It will really make them disappear. It's also got a really tiny, narrow profile, which means mm -hmm. you can lay it without having to shave down your doors and go to huge expense. So there are so many reasons that a product like Carndine can problem solve. And this comes, this is called Capri, but it comes in a million finishes. That's different so stones, different woods, it's really gorgeous. And it's uh, vinyl? It is, vinyl. it's a kind it's of a, a compound product. It's, okay. I'll just straighten that, it's so vinyl it's flooring. it's gonna be low maintenance, which oh, a lot of us gosh. are looking for. This isn't a Get big, heavy tile. No, this is you easy. are easy, it's easy. Very nice. Okay, so the other standout uh, piece is um, the tub. I mean, I came over here, it's like, is it time to take a bath? Exactly. Because I feel like it. Yeah, it's you know, beautiful. Matt Dusk has got his pool. We have got our slipper got bath. bath, okay? We've got an aquatic experience going on here as well. You know what, bathrooms are so sexy now. Mm -hmm. It's all about that escapist, the feel good, that even in the big box stores, you're getting beautiful design-led pieces. Mm -hmm. Now, this is from Rona. Ooh. You know, so it's a great quality piece, but not super expensive. Wow. Wow. You can get them right yeah. across Canada as well. And I actually love the idea of a slipper bath uh -huh. because they're just so, so beautiful. You know, it's a great object to look at. It so is. you want to get it into the center of a room. You want to be able to stand back and enjoy its beautiful curves. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you can actually save money by having one of these uh -huh. because you can actually save your hot water bill because you and your partner can get in at the same time. You can. <laughs> So you put can. Your, put your Everyone in the tub. Yeah, diamond. Let's okay. go. Roll up. Roll up. Exactly. Yep, we're saving money tonight. Saving money. <laughs> well. And maybe getting a bit of love and on too. Right? Oh, no. Where are your hands going? Where did the soap disappear to? Is that, oh, no. is that an extra bubble? And <laughs> now, on the subject, Tracy, of saving money, yeah. the vanities as well. This, this vanity <laughs> setup here came from Rona. Again, quality this is for gorgeous. less. The vanities, the cupboards, the sinks, everything. So you've got a lovely big slab white sink with a really simple drain, great storage down underneath, a four stone but very, very resilient counter. Oh, nice. You've got space at the bottom for things that you don't mind having on show. All your personal incidentals that you don't want to be seen can be shoved in the drawer out of sight. But again, yeah. we've doubled up and in this day and age, sometimes people are taking that extra space from a, an unused bedroom, adding it to the bathroom yes. to amplify. Double's great because in our life, Colin mm -hmm. takes a great deal of time in the morning looking this fabulous. Well, with... you don't just wake up looking no, that pretty. It I woke work. up like this. But the, the, <laughs> the downside to me, Tracy, is that he's in there for hours creating this splendor. So yes. I need a second sink. Absolutely. I need to be. So, can I just wet it and forget it? Wash and go. <laughs> right. In out. Well, this in is going to keep the relationship going. Yeah. Even is. siblings, like everyone it should is. have their own sink. They this should. is what I dream of. It's they beautiful. Should. Now, when we're talking about storage, the bathroom is the place. There are many things that maybe you want hidden a little bit let's talk about storage solutions here <laughs> absolutely you know you want to keep things close to hand where you want to use them yes you know and you how many of our bathrooms you know in their vanities there's toothpaste line here there's yeah, bits line here that's gross. or even worse medical items oh right people have got all squeezed out tubes of hemorrhoid cream you know <laughs> pills and potions and you name it you know if, if i go to someone's for dinner and i go i'm going to use the washroom wash my hands and i go in there and there's loads of medicines lying everywhere I'm not staying. Like, these people are sick. <laughs> Let's <laughs> get out. Like, like, we're leaving. <laughs> I'm like, why are we going, Colin? It's, it's, too, exactly. I'm like, You're I'm leaving. Here. it's not a house, it's I a hospital. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so keep these things hidden, people. These incredible mirrors from IKEA. 
are amazing because yeah. they've got little <laughs> pockets behind. Look at that. Oh my God, put the hemorrhoid cream in yeah, there. Yeah, hide stash up there. Yes. Keep everything hidden in there. You can keep an eye on your look as well. Oh, looking, looking fabulous from every angle. You know, and These the black metal really contributes to that whole kind of an industrial rustic feel as well. Absolutely. Everything about it, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And while we're talking about industrial, the black, the black mat. That's your key that note, That is so Tracy. nice. On the shelving there at the back, on this faucet here by Moen, mm -hmm. which is a great piece on the taps. And then on the IKEA cabinetry at the back, the Colin and Justin available at Home Sense sale starts Tuesday. Towel rack. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, designed by your lovely boys here, it's Tracy. Yeah, exactly. These are gorgeous. Uh, you know, Justin mentioned they're from IKEA. I love it. You know, when you see something in like architectural magazines or you know, you're in a beautiful restaurant, and then suddenly you see that design piece appear where you can actually afford it. Yes. You know, and having them from IKEA, fluted glass in there, it just keeps everything kind of mysterious. I love that. Beautiful. I mean, there's still a place for shiny and glossy and glitzy, Tracy, but yeah. sometimes taking it down a gear or two. We call it schematic decompression. And oh. this is, imagine you've walked in there and you go, ah, that's yes. what we want. That's and that is relief. the vibe 100%. We love so many of the items here and I know that you do at home. That's what that QR code is for on the screen. Scan it and we'll take you directly to the products. And once again, if you didn't hear Justin say it, that's from Colin and Justin, it that is. towel wrap. It is. That one right there. Bless you, and Tracy it's actually Moore. beautiful and sleek Bless and you, minimalist, and we love it. Time for a break. Good. We're gonna see you on the other side. <laughs> A delicious seafood chowder recipe, but maybe not for date night. All of the garlic that you could possibly put in a pot. Just to me, put it in. If a recipe says four, put 20. <laughs> Welcome back, gorgeous people in the audience. Today we are embarking on a journey to the East Coast with a beloved regional dish. Here to take us back to New Brunswick with a savory bowl of maritime fish chowder. Straight from the pages of this, his latest cookbook, Cook with Confidence, it's Chef Dennis Prescott. <laughs> Beautiful book. Thanks for joining us, Chef. Thank you for having me. It is very good to have, uh, have you here. We're making a fish chowder. We are. And so, you know, this is a recipe that stands the test of time. Mm. People love it, but you've put your own twist on it. Am <sighs> I right? Chowder people are my kind of people, yeah. to be honest. Uh, this is my own twist. All East Coasters have the, especially Maritimers and New Brunswickers, sorry, have mm -hmm. their own version of a chowder. This is mine. I yeah. love it. It's delicious. I would argue it's the best chowder you've ever had in your life. Got it. Uh, it's and the we're going to make one. it today. Okay, good. Yeah. How do we start the uh, recipe? So we in here, we've got our pot of vegetables. Uh, we've got the classics, uh, onion, celery, potatoes, bay leaf, and fish stock. And those are just mm -hmm. gently cooking down until the potatoes are just about fork tender. That's going to really flavor all of our veggies really nicely. Can you guys smell it already? Can you smell it? Isn't it's it nice? And all of the garlic that you could possibly put in a pot. Just to me, put it in. If a recipe says four, put 20. Yes, um, I'm with you. Yeah, so we're going to go in here. Uh, like I said, you can see it's just simmering away. We're going to go in here with milk. Nice. So what kind of milk do you like to use, we, Chef? We have got whole milk in here. You yeah. could adjust that if you wanted to. I think recipes are made uh, you know, to taste as best as they can, of course. But if you need to adjust it, that's fine. But whole milk is going to give you that maximum flavor. Very We've nice. We've got cream going in here as well just to make sure that you remember that it's delicious. This is maybe not a diet dish, but it's absolutely delicious. Right. And we've got fish. Okay, so let's talk about this fish. What yeah. fish would you usually put in your recipe? So we're going in with cod today. Uh, mm -hmm. Cod is very easily ac accessible on the East Coast, especially in New Brunswick. Yeah. Uh, haddock as well. Really, you just want a white fish. So, uh, you know, with fish, I think the best thing you can do is talk to your local fishmonger, your local fish market, ask good yes. questions find out what's locally available and what's going to taste the best because they're the experts. Absolutely. And I'm assuming that you're going to lean towards something more sustainable when it comes to your fish. Yeah, you definitely want to, you know, be conscious and thoughtful about where your food comes from. The yeah. nice thing about this cookbook is it really breaks down how you buy everything and, you know, yeah. little things that we can look for. I think it's a challenging conversation for sure. And what do we buy? So I wanted yeah. to really kind of in a fun, ac accessible way, give people some information to help because we all want to be, you know, feed people great food and we all want to mm. eat delicious food. Lemon zest. If yes. you've never used lemon zest before, it's absolutely, it's a great way of using the whole citrus and you don't always want that juice in there as well. So okay. it gives the flavor of the lemon without the actual juice. Yeah, so it's like lemon wanna... plus, right? You get a major punch of it and a little goes a long way. 
100%. So that, we had some smoked paprika go in there, a nice. little bit of pepper. And that's just really gonna gently cook away. With fish, you want it to be gentle. Give it the time that it needs. It doesn't yeah. need a long time mm -hmm. for something like a white fish. And you're left with something absolutely Ooh. beautiful. So it doesn't take long to get there. Do not overcook your fish. We talked a little bit about this. People tend to be, get a little nervous about fish. Yes. Right? So, yeah. But it doesn't need to be manhandled. It needs to be treated gently. Gently. Low, yeah. and, low and slow. Don't manhandle handle your fish. Don't man yes, if you right? take out if you take away anything today. Don't man <laughs> don't, don't be a manhandler. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you want to, I mean fi fish can be scary for, for a lot of yes, folks. I think if you've bit. never cooked fish before, yeah. uh, there are so many of course across the board lots of vegetarian and uh, you know beef, pork, etc. recipes in the cookbook, but yeah. fish becoming from where I come from it's near and dear to my heart. I yeah. love seafood, I love fish, and I really wanted to explain how you work with that, because yeah. we go, we spend our hard-earned money, we put the time into creating a dish, we want it to taste delicious. Yeah, well listen, it looks like it's ready. Um, I'm gonna get you to plate it up, but 100%. you say people get a little bit scared about their fish. There are people like me who are just scared to cook in general. Yes, so, so you're like, not I cooking just, confidently. I'm not cooking confidently, chef, and so let's do a little therapy session. I like the fact that you learned to cook as an adult. This isn't something like uh, that you were doing as a child. You mm -hmm. learned it along the way. Tell us a little bit about how you became a confident cook, like what that journey was like for you. You know, the 30,000 foot for me was I was a musician for about yeah. 10 years. I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. I was a guitar player. Mm -hmm. I lived in a very glamorous lifestyle in Nashville where I basically slept in either a 15 passenger van or on an air mattress. Wow. Uh, it sounds it, lux. It's amazing, yeah. actually. Uh, but I started cooking. I went to the library. I borrowed some cookbooks. I cooked for a big table full of people. And I fell in love with these beautiful moments that we create where we spend an extra hour at the table. I think we're better people when we spend more time at the table yeah. around great food. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, both this cookbook and really everything I do is to help encourage people to spend those special moments at the shared table. Okay, I love that. I love the idea of that. While you plate that up, you know, you had mentioned that it was that moment when everyone's sitting around and it doesn't matter how fancy it is. You can be sitting on milk crates. You're right. But that moment when the food is plated and people are sitting there and there's a little moment of silent and silence and they're about to eat, that's the moment you live for. And I think that that's really beautiful because that's about community. A hundred percent. Right? Yeah. Very nice. People coming together around the table, it's the best thing in the world. Little dill on here if you have access to it. I love dill. Same. Very you can nice. either do that or, or a nice piece of bread, bread, chowder, best friends. I'm Let's go in for a taste. A little... uh... Oh my gosh, it's the best chowder I've ever tasted, Chef. <laughs> no one's done it better than you. You can make this at home because everyone is going to go home with their own copy of Cook with Confidence by Dennis Prescott. I always want to make sure it's not upside down. <laughs> Head over to CityLine.tv for the full recipe and more CityLine after the break. Stay with us. Very nice show. Thank you. Coming up, the old school vanity is making a comeback. The dressing table is not dead and gone. It's thriving. I want one. I want right. one. It totally makes sense. table but they're making their way back into our bedrooms and we're going to show you how to welcome them back properly with the help of designer Jackie Glass. Jax, it's good to see you. Good to see you. I love a vanity. For yeah. me it's like that moment where you can like sit down and, and just sort of make yourself gorgeous, do your hair. It's nice and relaxed and intentional but what is the history behind vanities? There's a huge history. You know, we were talking about you know how your mother had a little vanity yes. table. I think Barbie had a vanity table. Barbie I think sure she did, did. Right? Yeah. But it actually started like back with the Egyptians because they used to oh. have decorative boxes that they would actually put their grooming tools and their cosmetics in. Okay. Then you fast forward to Europe, 17th century, they started to get really intricate with their tables, like they would actually have dressing tables. Uh -huh. And it was a real sign of social status or wealth if you started to have these beautiful, beautiful bespoke tables. Mm -hmm. So then you fast forward to now, like the, the dressing table is not dead and gone, it's thriving. Yeah. Many of my clients, when we're doing a custom reno, they want in their bathroom, 
they will usually want some sort of surface to do their makeup. Do I their want hair. one. I right. want one. It totally makes sense. So you recently did your vanity. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so if we show the first picture, this is the before of one part of my bathroom. Very pretty, console yes. table, great piece of art. It sure didn't look like that six months ago. I have every pe every travel size, you know, little product. Right. I've got products. I got hair stuff there. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't see the surface for all of the product. Did you have the prescription drugs that Colin oh, was there, talking baby. about in yeah. the bathroom? <laughs> they're there. Yeah, they're that's there. That's okay. I had, well, you're all of us. I yeah. get it. And I didn't even want to take a picture. It's that horrifying. <laughs> Honestly, you know. But here's what happened. Yeah. I thought, I need storage. Uh -huh. So it became, so I looked at that wall. That's a great area. I can do a pantry. And I want a dressing table. Because mm -hmm. the second part of the story is, I got kind of tired standing, putting my makeup on. Girl, doing tell my me hair. about it. Yes. So there's sort of the process. Now, this was done through Peron Design, and they did all my cabinetry before. They're really great. This is, so this is it. And then the final picture is where it is now, where mm -hmm. I can actually sit. I've got a great chair. Um, I think my little doggy's oh, in there. Nice. He's hanging out with me while I can now do my hair, blow dry my hair, do my makeup. It's brilliant. Oh my gosh, that's so lovely. So you've brought us a couple of yeah. examples of how you can do vanities here, more modern, more traditional. Let's start with the traditional. Okay, because the other thing too is you don't always have to do a built-in. So that's no. why I thought, let's talk about all of the beautiful uh, styles that you can get online yeah. or in stores that you know you don't have to actually do something built in. Just get a beautiful table like this. Nice. And a lot of people have traditional or transitional um, kind of styles in their home. So that's why I thought, well, the mirror, a little bit of soft gold detailing is a really pretty table that you could put in a space. Yes. You, some of them will come. If you're buying a dressing table or, uh, or makeup table proper, will come with a mirror. But you don't have to have one. I just purchased one. And it's just, again, a pretty shape. It works Lovely. with the table itself. Yeah. And then it comes down to what do you put on the dressing table, your makeup table. Well, mm -hmm. obviously, you need good lighting. You need electrical because, remember, you also probably want to do your hair. And there's yeah. lots of tools that you're going to need electrical for. And you also need to organize. I think that's so important. And there's so many great stores that you can go to to really get yourself organized. Because mm -hmm. you want it glammy. You want it pretty. But it also has to be able to hold a lot of things. Because typically, these tables, depending on your space, have to accommodate your space. So they may not be a six-foot dressing table. You might only yeah. have 36 inches. So you have to start planning it. Mm -hmm. The other thing to think about is seating. Now, I've just pulled some stools. Yeah, this but, is nice. But also, too, if you know that you spend a lot of time, because we were talking about how, how easy it is to really spend time and make time there, yeah. um, you want to make sure it's comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you feel supported. This is so different, but equally gorgeous. Yeah. So walk us through this one. Well, I picked this piece because I thought it would be nice to show someone what if this not only is a little makeup table, but mm -hmm. it's also morphs into a, a little computer table. Maybe you're going to yeah. do a Zoom call later. And if you're in a, a small space, or maybe it's your child's room or whatever, you want to be able to be able to move these things off. And that's where that organizing is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And again, thinking of a magnifying mirror. So yeah. make sure that you've got the right lighting. So try and get some natural light. Think about the type of light that you want as well that is artificial. Mm -hmm. And think about the mirror and also, too, whether, you know, an aging boomer as I am, you know, you need a little <laughs> magnifying mirror to see yourself. Those things, I'm terrified. Are but you? when I go to hotels, I go directly to them. So do I. Just show me everything. All the hair. Here you go. Just show me. <laughs> I got true. the tweezers ready. It's true. So good. Um, and, yes, be good to yourself with the lighting. Yes. Because don't rely on your overheads. Like, have a nice, soft, layered lighting. Absolutely. You will it'll look better, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Jax, thank you so much. You're most welcome. Let's go to break. we got more coming up. Stay with us. Coming up, Colin indulges his passion for arrows and circles. Let's let Colin use his arrows some exactly. more. Exactly. I'm obsessed with this. It's like a to. city line that gave me a stick. I don't know I don't like that. Pay attention, you at the back. Of bringing a room together and making it look finished with ease. So we're getting a styling lesson with Colin and Justin because they know what they're doing. <laughs> so what is the most common mistake that we are making when we are trying to style our spaces? People rush in far, far too quickly. They go shopping and do a snatch and a grab. They bring it all home. There is no common thread that works its way throughout. We yeah. say stop and really think before you buy anything. And when yeah. you know you love something or that it relates in some way to that 
which you already have or where you'd like to go, then that's your piece. Okay, yeah, because yeah. you see it in the store and you like it, but like, where does that fit? Yeah, how does it What's work? What's the theme uh -huh. here? Exactly, so you think, okay, well, what do I do with this? And that's what we're gonna talk about here. Okay. So we're gonna show you some rooms and we're gonna say, okay, you know what, what would a stylist do in these rooms? Ooh. And these are rooms that you're gonna recognize and you're thinking, okay, I can do that really simply at home. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So Tracy, the first one that we have here is a living room vignette. Now it's super, super easy. You find your statement wall, generally the largest unbroken wall in the room. You don't always have to furniture, you know, crammed back against the wall like a dental or a doctor's studio. Bring it forward, let it breathe. Yeah. Now we've found an amazing piece of art positioned exactly in the middle of the vignette there. Mm -hmm. Now that's your center point, right down the middle. Then you we've created. You have to choose yellow, huh? Can well, you, you, see you had the to. Yellow? Some oh, the color you, know, you got. Not bad. Maybe red. It's not bad. Maybe red. Yeah. If you so go anyway, up close, you, you find your yeah, you, you, you find your central line, you Tracy, go. as we've done there. Yeah. And then you start with symmetry either side. So the twin glass coffee tables on one side, mm. the twin glass coffee tables on the other side. But they're all mm. in the background, the lamp and the lamp. Then you start to break with the symmetry and you, you become a bit asymmetrical down on the coffee table. Now that looks really considered. It looks mm -hmm. really, really inviting. Whether you're selling your home, whether you're staging it to stay, i.e. making it cosy for yourself. Yeah. I love the whole idea of staging to stay because we see stylists doing this all the time for the market. Yeah. But make it right in your place and enjoy it on a daily basis because the biggest return you can get from your home is on a daily basis, not just measurable yes. by finance. You, this is the, your biggest income or uh -huh. your biggest chunk of money has gone into your home. Yeah. Enjoy it. Stage You've it for got yourself. It. You've got it, Tracy. Exactly. Okay, what have we got here? Now, what else would a stylist do? They would take dead space and make it alive. Yeah. You know, so maybe you've got a little corner of the hallway, you know, there's a part of the room that just doesn't really do much. It doesn't have a focal point, so you don't have a great window, you don't have a fireplace to dress onto. Mm -hmm. So they would create a visual focal point and they would do it with furniture. You know, there's a console here, mm -hmm. which is our major piece here. Nice and narrow as well, you know, with console tables, so you can use that in a smaller space. And obviously the thing about art, stylists love to do things in threes. Yes. I don't know why, it just looks better. You, know, you always see groups of threes you see tall middle and small little yes. groupings of items on tables as well it's just a really great thing to do with your home and that's the thing all of these things are not about spending money they're just about spending time with the things that you've got already so it's not even about giving it a whole new look mm -hmm. but maybe it's about editing who you are you know right. stylists will leave a lot of space as well enjoyment space is critical so you actually can stand back and enjoy the beauty of each item Right, so if okay. you've got everything cluttered in there, you're not really enjoying no. anything, right? No, no. you've got to have... Every, we, we always use that analogy. Imagine you've got a big ballroom and you want Claudia Schiffer in. She's going to look amazing. Mm -hmm. Bring Naomi in. She's going to look amazing. Bring mm -hmm. in Kate Moss. But you put 5,000 supermodels in that room, yeah. you've lost the impact of each of them. So I less love is this more. analogy. Isn't it a good one? I've never heard it done with supermodels, it's a good one. Well, but listen, it works. I love my old girl quality, old school supermodels. <laughs> yes. Not like the modern breed, the old girls. No, the None. 90s supermodels the old, Tracy, forever. Same language. Forever. Same language. Yeah. George yeah. Michael videos. Michael videos. No <laughs> work. <laughs> now, Tracy, <laughs> dressing room. What would a stylist do? Nice. A stylist would first of all figure out, I think we talked about this earlier on, double D storage, display uh -huh. and discreet. So behind mm. those doors are beautifully arranged gowns and gorgeous things that suggest a lovely lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Either side of there is open storage, lots of boxes, little areas that you can auto-suggest the lifestyle. And similarly, down on that bonquette, which is where you can sit as you choose your outfit for that day. Yeah. A lovely handbag. Now, if you're selling your home and you've styled it like this, Tracy, top tip from Wildly Justin and Colin. Wildly unnecessary, but we love yeah. it. Top yeah. tip from CNG. If you're selling your home and you've done all of this to make it look gorgeous, create an inventory, because if you've got all of those people walking through putting things in their pockets, <laughs> after every viewing, you do a count up of what remains, girls, right? You're never coming over. No, those wandering hands. But yeah, what it would is a... big tote. Oh, oh, my goodness. I bring a bag with me. A trolley. Oh, look at that. I'll distract you. Look at that lovely thing there, Tracy. Oh, oh in the bag. But yeah, what, Domaniac. what would a stylist do? A stylist would take time. A stylist would really consider every element. And again, it's the avoidance of rush. You're if right. you don't rush, if you go slowly, this is the composure visually that you'll get. Nice twall, by the way. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. That's Very inspired. That's what all the boys say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let Colin use his arrows some exactly. more. Exactly. I'm obsessed with this. I got to? a city line. They give me a stick. I love it. I'm like that. Pay attention, you at the back. Okay. <laughs> look at this bedroom. That's, yep. a, that's a bold look, isn't it? it? Is you know, there's yeah. a lot of personality, a lot of design going on in there. 
but none of it is actually affixed to the wall. So if you're in a rental property, this is something you could do there as well. Yep. You know, and this is what a stylist would do. They would use soft furnishings. They would use fabrics mm -hmm. to suggest design rather than maybe dedicated to something a bit bolder on the walls yeah. that a landlord wouldn't like. Go big or go home as well. Mm -hmm. You know, stylists love to make big statements. So that's a custom headboard. You know, and actually they're not that expensive, but a huge, huge headboard there not only is practical, stops the wall getting dirty, nobody likes a greasy head on the wall, <laughs> uh, but it also gives you this beautiful source of pattern as well and a source of colour that you can then pick up and the other items It's here. connectivity. Lovely. And at the end of the day, every bed needs three starfish. You know, yes. every, every bed. single bed. A star exactly. That's a stylist. That's what you need. A, a stylist uh, exactly. rules right there. Get three starfish, okay? Do you get, that's your takeaway. It. It We're is. going to break. We got more coming up. Stay with us. City Law. OMD. Real life solutions. Have a new discovery. <laughs> and honest conversations. I'm sweating now. That's what happens when I get embarrassed. Cozy up with City Law. Weekdays. City TV. Wait till you're locked in my embrace. Wait till I draw you near. Wait till you see that sunshine place. Ain't nothing like it here. The best is yet to come. Every bone, every fine. The best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. That was Matt Dusk. So he was singing, of course, his rendition of Tony Bennett's The Best is Yet to Come ahead of his spring tour. Dusk sings Bennett in honor of, you guessed it, Tony Bennett. So... Let me, let's talk about this. I brought the experts back so we could all uh -oh. look at you as you answer. <laughs> <laughs> he just said, like, this is so, like, brutal. Everyone watching him while he's sitting here watching. So everyone look at him. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Your Why groupies? Tony Bennett? Like, talk to me about Tony Bennett. So I, I, lived in, I lived in Las Vegas for four years from 2004 to 2008, and I shared a showroom with Tony Bennett. So oh. when he came in, I got kicked out. <laughs> but I also got I also got free tickets nice. and I actually got to spend a lot of time with him backstage and him sharing these amazing stories so I'm, I, I started a record dedicated to him a couple years and here we are That's amazing. beautiful. We met him as well. He's Did you? Yeah. 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 Class act. Uh, Did you find? Uh, we actually, yeah. oh, he, no. was the most <laughs> he was the most amazing man. Yeah. We did a program okay. in Britain called Through the Keyhole yeah. with Sir David Frost. Okay. And uh, we'd filmed it with Sir David Frost. We were in a restaurant in London and David Frost was in with Tony Bennett. So he brought him up to our table and introduced him. Amazing. And wow. he was, you were like, just like this. It's Tony Bennett! It's Tony Bennett! What a nice guy. Such amazing. a nice guy. I know. Always welcoming. Yeah. And all the stuff with Gaga as well, obviously, so his good. collaborations with because she's that? a superstar. Well, hold on a second. I just want to switch gears quickly because we're almost done, and he's on tour. Mm. Like, tell us oh. about your tour. You're excited? Yeah, going across Canada, mattdusk.com, yeah. grab some tickets, Absolutely. come out, have some drinks, listen to some great music. He's going to love it. You're going to love it. It's going to be a ton of fun. Thank you to all of our guests on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, go to mattdusk.com for tickets. Uh, listen to his new song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, off of his upcoming album. Thank you to the studio audience. You were fun! And everyone at